Hello, and welcome to Scott's Odyssey. Have you ever walked out onto a location and feel the magic? Today, we're going to a land of make-believe, where anything is possible if you can imagine it. In this land, there's a waterfall, one that flows from the Hires Run over a 45 foot tall cliff. And one of the only six in Pennsylvania that you can actually go behind the actual cascade. Although it shares its name with 10 other falls in Pennsylvania, not to mention one just over the border in New York and one just over the border in Ohio. And again, two more just over the border of New Jersey. This one shares a special place in the hearts of just about every Pennsylvanian who knows the more modern story. Welcome to Buttermilk Falls of Pennsylvania, formerly named the Aurora Falls and the origin of the land of make-believe. See you in a minute. Welcome back. If you've watched my videos before, thank you for your patronage. And if you're new to Scott's Odyssey, welcome aboard. I hope you enjoy this story of the Indiana County Buttermilk Falls. Please click subscribe. And if you like this video, give it a like. Sometime around 1931 and up until 1956 was a wooded land that was surrounded by big trees lots of wildlife, a beautiful waterfall, and a land just ripe for make-believe. This was the setting of a retreat estate in Indiana County, Pennsylvania, owned by a wealthy man of entrepreneurial spirit out of Latrobe, Pennsylvania. The property consisted of a small cottage, some horse stables, outbuildings, a three-car garage, and an impoundment for swimming in the creek just above a 45-foot waterfall. The owner of this property was none other than Fred Brooks McFeely, a name synonymous with a mailman found in a television program of Fred Rogers, known as Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Why do I bring up the connection in the name of an imaginary mailman and a well-to-do estate owner? Well, as it turns out, the Fred Brooks McFeely was Fred Rogers' grandfather, Mr. Rogers himself. He spent a lot of time with his grandfather in this land full of imagination. Believe it or not, according to Fred Rogers himself, the foundation of his endeavor to make Mr. Rogers' neighborhood and the land of make-believe is rooted in his time spent with his grandfather at this specific location. Fred Rogers described his grandfather as a man of risk, adventure, and imagination. Allegedly something Mr. Rogers himself did not have, being that he was the neighborhood stereotype of a lonely fat kid with every ailment you could find in a medical journal, living in a single bedroom for his formative years. Essentially, Fred Rogers' grandfather and this location was his escape into a better, more accepting, and a much more adventurous world. It was even in this location that Granddad McFeely told Fred, you know, you made this day a really special day just by being yourself. There's only one person in the world like you, and I happen to like you just the way you are something Fred Rogers himself would repeat to tens of millions of children over the 33-year 
of his program. So let's take some time out and think about those words as we explore the Buttermilk Falls and the land of make-believe. Oh, oh, I see it. Is that it or is this it? I think, well, ah. see there's two parts. What's this? It's the foundation, I'm going in. This would be an impoundment that you could swim in directly above the waterfall. That is so cool. I wonder how deep it actually went. Probably not much deeper. I would assume not. Although, so this would be like an exit. It would have been so the water could have gone back down to the creek. Oh, they even diverted it. That is so, so cool. Yeah. Look at the way this is even dammed up so that they could actually get the water into it. Oh yeah, that's not natural. That was a lot of work. That's just beautiful. We've got a stone path. We gotta figure out how to get to the <laughs> So I thought, although I thought it would be a lot more difficult to find, I thought it was you'd have to go a distance up to find the impoundment and things like that that I talked about. Apparently, it's all right here. There seems to be something else up this way. Um, oh, and uh, this guy here, he's, he's my buddy Brad. He comes out and hangs out with me whenever we get the opportunity to be on the same schedule at the same time. Anyway, let's keep exploring around the top. We're, we're going to get to the waterfalls, of course, but let's let's take a look at this first. I don't know. <laughs> look at this over here. I was looking over here. Look at that over there. Look up there on the bank. They got. Oh wow. Uh, maybe that was the original original trail to get down here. Might have For the kids. Because we know that the parking lot at the top is where the cottage was. So this here would have been a platform where you would have had like a park bench or something. You came out of your cottage, you come down, sit down, and and then you just look at all this beautiful. There would have had to have been. It would have been neat to see a picture of this. So cool. All right, we can't go too far. There's a trespass sign. Hey, Brad, there's something neat up here. On this, on this set of blocks here, we have a, a situation where there's a hole, and I wonder if there was a water effect that came off of this as well. Yeah, so like you're walking down the steps to come down to your sitting spot. Although it could be, it could be something less complicated. <laughs> Instead of it being a beautiful natural water effect in a really cool cottage area, it could have been, you know, where your toilet flushed out too. <laughs> we got rocks. We, we got a combination of rock and concrete here. Oh, this is beautiful. Look at the moss and all. Really. Ice heat. Really cool fact. It's like hair, ice hairs. There's crystals that grow upward. All right, I'm not going up there because of heart reasons, but you feel free. I'm on it. <laughs> Handle it. <laughs> All right, so this is another big impoundment area. I don't know if they would have swam here. I th I'm really thinking they would have probably gone down there. To the one by the bridge. More than here. This would have slowed it down. There's brakes in this little dam. Let's get down there and get a good image. Give you guys a little ASMR there.
There's Brad, he's recording. I'm trying to get a picture of you, like, taking a picture of me. Imagine that. You picturing me picturing you. That is cute. <laughs> hey, there's some carvings underneath the, uh, where the waterfall is and the rocks. There's carving in the rock there. Yeah, you should go in there and find out. <laughs> It's only what, 27 degrees, right? It's not. The water's water probably warmer than the outside air temperature, so we're good. I'll uh, warm up. Yeah, some jumping jacks. Where is it at? Oh, all right. So that, whatever those markings are, are on the pipe. They're on the pipe? So it's like an arrow saying the water goes this way. Yeah. I don't know if you can see there's a pipe there. I don't know if you can hear it, but. <laughs> There it is, that's the waterfall. That's not the waterfall. <laughs> it's a water. All right, so I came to the other side. We're still above the falls. Came to the other side, because saw an interesting structure. And, well, I also saw, oh, can't see it that way. Can you see it that way? You see it? You see it? I see it. It's a hole. It's a hole. Well, you know what that means, don't you? It means I gotta flip the camera around. And, and let's see. Let's see, are we going into the hole? No good. No good. Thank no, you. I don't have my regular flashlight. Anybody in there? Hello? No. I don't have my normal flashlight with me, so I guess we're not going in this hole. Well, we we'll get it on the entrance. next time. Cow pee's bad. All right, so we're coming away from the water. We're coming up on this bridge here. And this bridge was set up on August 21st, 2017, during the solar eclipse that we were having. So much so that they even have a plaque on there that identifies this as the eclipse bridge. And that's when it was put into place. August 21st, 2017. All right, we ready for the next part? Let's get down to that waterfall. So we're making our way down to the piste de resistance. It's a slow trip. Uh, the steps are all very icy. Got to use the handrails. We both slipped several times. And we're thinking about the fact that, you know, it's 27 degrees. Probably shouldn't get wet, but, uh, well, we're on the lower platform. And let me show you what we're getting into. Doesn't look like we're getting out of this one, guys. And that one right there, he's the bugger. He's just shooting it at us. He's like, I'm gonna wet you. These handrails are epic. I <laughs> like wait, it, it tells you everywhere that it's slippery and to use these handrails, but we we have a Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> Can you imagine how much water weeps on that stuff right now? Like yeah. you going first? Okay, here I go. We're going slow. Icicles are sharp on your hand. Oh, shoot. Don't touch the pointy end of the icicle then. All right, here we go. Here we go. Look at that. All right. Oh, there's water. There's a lot of water. Woohoo! That wasn't that cold. That's better than a cup of coffee. That wasn't cold at all. All right, how's the camera looking? You gotta, gotta give me a minute here. I gotta dry her off.
one here. Or there. Or up there. Well, oh, like the big the big piece? Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. A giant freeze thaw. Let me know in the comments below if you know of stories and locations such as this one. My research is limited only by the information that people don't share openly. Help me break that barrier and let's share the history and the culture of who we once were. If you haven't already, remember, click like, click the subscribe, and you'll see more Odyssey stories of who we once were. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.